This video is brought to you by Torres. After many years of being an Apple fanboy, in 2021 I switched to Android. And now, thanks to the iPhone 13, I'm moving back to Apple. Here's why. <clears throat> You're moving back to Apple? Come on, Alex, you were never really gone. Yeah, I know, I do have some Apple products and I'm well trapped into the Apple ecosystem, but I really enjoyed breaking the cycle this year. And that display on the S21 Ultra, I can't say S21 Ultra fast, so the display on this compared with the 12 Pro Max is the best for me and arguably still able to compete with Apple's new display on the 13 Pro range. I know Samsung is one of the manufacturers, but Apple's implementation of 120 Hz ProMotion is really good. Is it better than the S21 Ultra now? Yes and no. More on that later in the video. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech reviews and I'm here every week. So if this S21 Ultra is so good, why are you moving back to Apple then? Well, let me start by sharing my experience so far and then hopefully you'll understand. And maybe it's not goodbye, maybe it's a see you later. Using the S21 Ultra since February and as my main phone for about six months, I learned a lot. The main thing that surprised me was how there seems to be a perception that Android is not as friendly as iOS. But I was really impressed at how good the Android experience has been. Was that Android experience what made me switch from the iPhone 12 Pro Max to this? No, not by itself anyway. I switched to the S21 Ultra before because of the display being superior and because of the camera options and how much fun it was to use. Every time I wanted to relax in the evenings and watch some content and browse social media and things like that, I picked the S21 Ultra every time instead of the 12 Pro Max. So to answer the question of why I'm moving back to Apple now, let's break it down. Starting with something that I took for granted and maybe it doesn't apply to you, but it was a big drawback for me and that is AirDrop. Yes, there are many workarounds that mostly rely on third-party apps and Bluetooth, and I tried them all. I just could not find something that transferred data as quickly and as smoothly as AirDrop. As I said, it may not bother you because you know you might you might not use a Mac for your workflow, but if you do and you're transferring images and videos, you know, between your phone and your Mac, this could be a biggie. Sometimes I forget to include a shot in a video, for example. And a bit last minute, all I want is that, you know, five, 10 second clip that I could, you know, just do with my iPhone instead of picking my bigger camera, transferring the SD card to the MacBook, etc. And this might be late at night and I'm tired and all I want to do is, you know, quick shoot, airdrop to the Mac and drag to my timeline, done. You know, airdrop is perfect for that. But I am going to miss the S21 Ultra connectivity speeds. I don't know how they're doing this, and you know, this is the Exynos 2100 by the way, but the Wi-Fi speed just seems to be a lot better in comparison to even the 13 Pro Max. It could be something related to my router, router and my Wi-Fi here at home, but that's been consistent when I'm out and about as well. I only ever experience 5G when I go into town, into London, but I haven't used it enough to compare. So I'll leave that aspect out of it for now. We're gonna talk about the display and the cameras in a minute. So this is a good opportunity to talk to you about a product that will help you protect your phone. These are excellent protective cases from today's sponsors, Taurus. You've spent quite a bit of cash on these devices and whilst it's nice to every now and then rock them naked, especially when you go you know, for a custom color like this Phantom Brown or the Sierra Blue, I really think a protection is a must if you, you know, want to retain the resale value and look after your device especially if you're clumsy like me. I bought these cases myself last year for my 12 Pro Max and I made a video about them before. So I really liked how thin and how minimal they looked. So when Taurus reached out to me, I was more than happy to include them here as I know they're good quality cases and they don't really break the bank. They're quite smart looking cases as well. They're, they're not flashy or in your face from a design perspective and they have options for different styles and levels of protection. Starting with the clear case options, they have two models the crystal clear and the diamond. The crystal clear focuses on being ultra transparent, so you know you barely notice there's a case. So this is a great case if you wanna keep that original look of your device. As I said in my previous video, they do have a great camera module protection, which is actually much better than more expensive cases. So kudos to Taurus on that one. This camera lip is one millimeter above the lens and the same level above the screen as well. So putting the phone down with the display or the camera facing down will be protected in the same way. The diamond clear case focuses more on being shockproof. 
so not as transparent as the crystal clear model but much more rigid. I'll remember to remove this film that comes with the case as well. This diamond model is military grade certified from a drop test perspective so you are getting full protection here. We then have the Guardian model. This model here not only offers a bit more shockproof protection but they also feature oleophobic coating so less fingerprints and a lovely silky feel to it. And one of my favorite features, the Guardian model comes with these extra buttons as well so you can customize them to your liking and that's really cool with all these different colors. And finally, this is the slim fit option which is one of my favorite cases when it comes to being understated and minimal. Super slim, it has nano coating so it's not going to get scratches, very easily anyway, and it's anti fingerprints too. The buttons have this nice floating design which makes it very responsive without adding any extra bulk to the case. As always, there will be links in the description for you and thanks Taurus for sponsoring this video. Right, one of the key features for me on the S21 Ultra was the 120Hz display. Not only because of the refresh rate, and not many people mentioned this, but the aspect ratio of 20 to 9 instead of the iPhone 19.5 to 9. That, coupled with the fact that there's no notch, to me makes the display much more immersive and actually more comfortable as well to hold when you're playing or watching content because it is a bit narrower than the iPhone. It's not something you notice in short little pickups, but you definitely feel it when, when watching content for a long time or typing for longer periods. Uh, when it comes to the display quality itself, this is where things get a bit interesting. There are times when the content looks a little bit more washed out on the iPhone and sometimes overexposed and other times where I prefer the iPhone colors to this one. And this was consistent indoors and outdoors, irrelevant of true tone or adaptive brightness being on or off. I feel this one really came down to preference and the content I was watching itself. Now one thing that I did notice is that the iPhone 13 now seems much brighter. In my previous comparison between the 12 Pro Max and the S21 Ultra, this came out on top, even though the display on the 12 Pro Max was no slouch, but outdoors, the S21 Ultra was just much brighter, a much better display overall. Now, even though the colors are different, depending on you know the content that you're watching or the app that I was using, when it comes to brightness, the iPhone 13 Pro Max just seems ever so slightly brighter now, which is astonishing really. Keeping it real though, no one really watches content in full brightness or outside all the time, but purely from a testing perspective, I thought that was interesting. It's always tricky to replicate that on, on a YouTube video because there's so many variables between me and you, but I hope you can pick up on what I'm seeing here. Is this enough of a difference to make it a deciding factor when you're choosing something like this? I don't think it is, but I think if you are considering the S21 Ultra, the display is still incredible and as I said, the aspect ratio is actually nicer for me even now compared with the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Just a quick reminder to like this video if you're getting any value from it, it really helps the channel. And if you like my stuff, there's over 120 videos now for you to enjoy it. Not all of them are good to be honest with you but it would mean the world if you subscribe to my channel. I'm here every week. And then there's the cameras. I knew it would be a slight compromise for me to switch to the S20 on Ultra in terms of video quality, but I was okay with that for my usage anyway, because I really enjoyed using the different camera modes here in comparison with the 12 Pro Max, which you know does great videos, but I just got bored with the iOS camera app. And sure, you can install third-party iOS apps like Filmic Pro and fiddle with the settings, but I just thought some of those options like director's view here already works on the S21 Ultra out of the box and it's just more accessible. Now, on the 13 Pro Max, the game has changed. Not a little bit, considerably. Not only do we have some fun options like macro and cinematic mode, they are actually better than the similar features on the S21 Ultra. In addition to that, we now have ProRes and you know, file sizes aside, this is a major game changer for anyone trying to capture really high quality clips with pro quality really and edit them later, adding color grading and things like that. I say clips because 15 seconds of ProRes footage in my experience has been like one gig file. So yes, it will need a lot of storage and therefore keep those clips quite short. There is one other aspect worth mentioning here, which is gaming. Not really that relevant for me, but I know you might appreciate this. In my previous comparisons, there was this one game called Genshin Impact, which completely melted the 12 Pro Max and, and caused some extreme overheating as well and screen dimming and you know, it was unusable on the 12 Pro Max. And I noticed that Aaron from Mr. Who's the Boss mentioned that there were no issues with this game in his experience. And for me, 
Yes, there were, Aaron. Massive issues. Especially when you really play that game for, for an hour or over an hour. With the S21 Ultra, that game was actually okay. After about an hour, it did drop some frames, but nothing like the 12 Pro Max. You know, I did about five different videos comparing these two devices. So check this playlist here if you want to know more. But given the new processor on the iPhone and the improved cooling technology, I thought I'd try that same game again and absolutely no problem now. You know, that game is a beast still and I did not notice any issues whatsoever. So Apple, as far as this game goes, well done. So does this mean I'm getting rid of my S21 Ultra? I'll be honest with you. I was tempted to try the Pixel 6 Pro, but two things happened. One. Google didn't want to take my S21 Ultra as a trading deal and that got me thinking maybe this is still worth more than the Pixel even at you know almost a year later and that may be obvious to you and probably is now to me but it wasn't at the time when I was trying to buy it. I thought the Pixel was really going to compete at the highest levels and the other point was that the Pixel reviews started to come in and I'm not convinced it would be a good exchange so far. So based on that I decided to keep it for now and wait for the S22 Ultra or whatever they call it and maybe I'll upgrade it to that and who knows, maybe go back to Android at that point. I think it's cool to keep an open mind when it comes to, to these brands, you know, because competition is great, you know, but it's so fierce now and everyone is trying to innovate. I think it's good to keep looking around. The new Sony Xperia phone slash camera, whatever you want to call that thing, is really impressive too. So I'm really looking forward to the next Samsung and I might try something completely different, but for now, I think the 13 Pro Max is the best device for me and my workflow. Let me know what you think down in the comments and I'll see you and your smiling faces on the next one. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe.